Here we have the Google Cloud Shell, which is a very interesting environment to do both systems administration tasks like talking to storage or controlling applications, but also do doing light development. So let's take a look at some of the things that you can do. First up here, you have the project window. So if you go here, you can look at existing projects or you could create a new project. You also could open up a full-fledged editor. Uh, we won't do that for now, but you could open up a development environment that has better code completion. You also could send key combinations. You can go to terminal settings and go through and change the theme, the text size, other things like that. You also can preview uh, a running web application, which we'll do in a second. You can also look at the session information, for example, how much quota you've used. We also can upload or download a file. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. If we did an LS, you can see there's a readme here. If I wanted to download that, I could select download. It's going to transfer everything that's in my directory. Now, I will also could individually download something. If I toggle through and I select an individual file, it'll also do that as well. So there is a way to go back and forth and as well upload files directly into the Cloud Shell environment. Now, another thing to be aware of uh, that's a little bit interesting is that you can do like development inside of this environment. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to Rust Up and I'm going to install Rust inside of this environment. So we'll go ahead and curl this and it will proceed. Whenever I install something new, uh, like a new development environment, I often will have to then edit the bash RC file so that it is a convenient uh, reload. I don't have to you know, source something over and over again. So we'll see that in this particular situation, the same thing will occur. You can see here that it will um, have it installed automatically. And if I go through here and I look at this, it will source the uh, cargo environment. And if I go to my bash RC file here, you'll see that, that, and we also have it loaded inside the bash RC. So this gives us the ability to always have this cargo tool available, which is the tool for building new projects and rest and then put in a name and we can call this web and that'll put it in a current working directory. So it really depends on what it is you're trying to do. In this case, uh, let's go ahead and use the root uh, directory here. And then if I go into this cargo file, I'll need to change it and we can look at it's 431. So let's go ahead and put that in. We'll just say equals uh, 431. Perfect. Now that we've got that set up, all we have to do is um, edit this source file inside. So we'll say source main. Then we just need to put a hello world in there. And so I'll just grab a simple hello world here. And we'll just do a set paste and throw this in. All right. Now we've been able to get this to run by using cargo run. And I would just go over to the web preview uh, menu here. And if we look at this, I'm able to see this hello world application. So it's actually I'm not a bad environment for doing quick prototyping. And if we want to go into the code itself and change it a little bit, let's go into the uh, code here and just change it so that we know that we can easily. Here we are with AWS Cloud Shell. Uh, you can see here from the documentation that it's a command line access to AWS resources and tools in the browser, which is really a critical uh, aspect of it. So this means if you're at the library or if you're at a coffee shop, you can shell into here and start doing work. And it's going to be very fast because you're inside of the AWS ecosystem. So if we scroll down here and we take a look, uh, one of the things that's kind of cool about this is that uh, you can see here the benefits. There's no extra credentials to manage because it's role-based privileges. Also, it's automatically updated with the latest operating system from Amazon. The tools are installed. There's no cost. You'll also get a gig of storage and you can customize it. So really in a nutshell here, here's like the visual view is that it's one of the interfaces that you can use to programmatically control the AWS platform. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna go to my Cloud Shell uh, environment. And let's just take a look uh, at this. Uh, how do I launch this? So I go over here and it's just on any environment here in any region, you can launch this uh, and you get this uh, message here from my previous work in the Cloud Shell. So before we even get started, I'm going to show you a little trick here, which is I can delete 
my my current work. So this is really handy because uh, if you're doing a bunch of fancy stuff inside of your cloud shell and you were experimenting and you screwed everything up, well, it's good to know that you can actually delete the entire thing and it'll just restart. Okay, we're back here. Uh, AWS has reset the cloud shell environment. And let's take a look at a few of the other things here in this actions menu. So a few things that I think are really helpful is if you want to open up a new shell, you can go here, right? And now we've got a new shell. So you can open up as many of these as you want. Also, if you want to split into rows, you can have a top and bottom. This can really be handy if you're working with, let's say, some kind of a, a foreground mode, you know, microservice like Flask or Fast API, and then you want to invoke it uh, right below. This really, really handy interface. You can also go through here and split into columns, right? So you can you can build out this, you know, a re really like a dashboard for doing things inside of your terminal. Now, if we uh, scroll down here as well, uh, we can see that you can download files. So, so that's pretty handy. If I go in here and I uh, look at, uh, for example, the PWD command, which shows me where my path is, and I do an LS, there's nothing in here. So we'll come back to that, but I could download a file if I wanted to. Now, also, we can upload files. So maybe we'll start with this. You can upload one file at a time from your computer to the home directory. Your home directory is limited to one gig. So here we go. This seems like a good idea is I can upload one file. Very, very common for people working with data to upload, let's say, a CSV file or, or some other uh, artifact that you're going to do machine learning on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop and I have a, a zipped file here on my desktop that I'm going to upload called cat's dog small. So let's go here and let, let's uh, upload this file. We'll go ahead and select it. Uh, here we go. Cat's dog small. Perfect. And then I'll click upload. And what's really handy about this is now I'm inside of the AWS ecosystem. And, and this is really handy because I can actually move it around places. So if I go through here and I say unzip cats and dogs, there we go. We've got this whole thing inside, uh, which is pretty handy. Uh, <laughs> if I want to, I can look inside of this directory. There we go and we can see these different files. So let's let's go ahead and test out the download here since we're already here. Um, so what I would do is I would just need to know the name of a path. So let's go ahead and uh, download this file and let's just put in that path here. So we've got uh, slash home and cloud shell user cats dogs small cat zero dot JPG. Okay, that looks perfect. Download it. There we go. So there is actually a, a great feedback loop where, where you can go up and down uh, into these uh, different directories. And I'll probably just uh, remove this file as well, um, yeah, which is always a good idea once you've uploaded it, if you don't want it anymore, because there's a limited amount of space. We can see this by running the df-h command. This shows us the file system. And notice here, that in our home directory, this is where we would actually be uh, working with storage. And there's only 10 megabytes that are currently used, but I have another 899 megabytes available. So that's plenty to do many things that you'd want to do inside of the AWS uh, Cloud Shell. So another thing that we can talk about here that's pretty nifty is that notice if I type in echo dollar sign bash, <clears throat> sorry, shell, it'll say bin bash. That's the default environment. At, now, what's nice about this is you can obviously edit your shell. Let's go ahead and uh, edit our bash shell real quick. And let's just put something uh, kind of fun in there. And let's just say um, uh, unbe uh, below here, that's echo. Uh, this is bash. Here we go. And now I'll go through here and uh, close uh, this environment by opening up a new tab and it'll say if this is bash, right? And I can close that other one. So that's pretty handy, but we don't have to just use bash. We can also use other shells. We can also use the ZSH shell, which many developers like because it has a few extra commands here. Similarly, notice how the, um, the bash uh, command didn't run because it's a different shell environment. We can edit this and we can go through here and we can go to our zshrc file and, and notice here that there's some really cool commands that we could play around with and we could actually 
uh, tweak these. Like uh, one of my favorite ones in the ZSH uh, configuration file is to do auto CD so it doesn't uh, need to type in the CD command. But we'll just keep things simple here and I'll just type in echo uh, this is ZSH. And again, if we go through here and we go to that same thing I did before, we'll open up a new tab. There we go. Uh, this one is bash because the default shell that opens is bash. But what happens if I type in ZSH? This is ZSH, right? So we, we have two environments here that we could play around with, but we're not done. If you're a .NET developer, uh, you may want to use the PowerShell uh, prompts. Here we go. If we go to PowerShell prompts, you also could... Uh, go through here and build out things using uh, C Sharp uh, and play around in, inside of this uh, interactive environment. So really pretty pretty awesome that you can actually play around with all these different uh, environments here, whether you're a .NET, .NET developer, you you like Bash, or you like Z Shell. So <laughs> let's hope, go ahead and uh, move on a little bit here and actually uh, play around uh, a little bit with uh, using this environment to, to actually do some work. So what I'm going to do here... Uh, as I'm going to exit again, and, and we can see here that uh, if I type in uh, echo dollar sign shell, we can we can double check what shell we're in. Okay, good. We're in the bash shell. So the first thing that I would say that we can do here is that we could copy some files to an S3 bucket. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at the official documentation here. Let's go ahead and pull this up. And this is a great place to uh, get ideas about what you can do. So look, copy multiple files between your local machine and Cloud Shell. So this looks pretty cool. What we can do is we can actually upload multiple files to a bucket. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and create a bucket from the command line. So first step here, uh, I'll go through here and I'll uh, type in this command. And so this command here says AWS, uh, use the S3 API, create a bucket, and, and we're going to actually put the bucket name right here. So we'll go ahead and call this uh, something unique. We'll call this cats, dogs, uh, 11, two, one, two, zero, two, one. There we go. That looks, that looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and push return. What's nice about this is that I don't necessarily need to use the, um, the, the console itself to do things. Now let's go ahead and double check to make sure that this exists. So if we go through here uh, and I look for cats and dogs, we should see if I refresh, there we go, cats, dogs, right? So we're able to programmatically create buckets and control them, which is really, really handy. Uh, another thing you can do as well, uh, if, I, if I type in AWS S3 LS, I can pipe out the output of this to count the number of buckets. Here you can see that I have 99 buckets. So what I did is I ran the AWS S3 command to list the number of buckets, piped that into the word count dash L command, and now I can see that there's 99 buckets. So, okay, what else can we do? Well, we can synchronize these files here. Uh, and in fact, uh, if I look in this directory, these are these files that I uploaded earlier. So what I can do is I can type in a, a synchronization command to put these inside of this bucket, uh, cats and dogs here. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll take this name, which is a neat little trick that I like to do, and I will put in the hashtag right there. And that way I can refer to this command without it blowing up. And all I need to do here is just type in AWS S3 sync dot, which would put everything in this directory into uh, this destination. And so this is the trick here is I want everything that's in this directory to be synchronized to the remote S3 directory. You can see here every single one of those files is synchronized very, very quickly. That's the other advantage of using this Cloud Shell environment. And once all these files are uploaded or synchronized into this environment, uh, what I can do as well is I can actually go through here and uh, verify uh, that that bucket is actually ready to go. So. Let's go ahead and uh, watch this thing go here. You can see here tons of files are synchronizing. Uh, and if I wanted to make small changes, the synchronization command will actually keep them uh, up to date. So really, you can see how the Cloud Shell, if you're working with any kind of a data pipeline, data engineering, machine learning engineering, is really invaluable. So let's go back to the AWS Cloud Shell here. Go ahead and click refresh. There we go. And we can see here that all those files are, are, are inside of my box.